Hey, it's Joe Crump. Uh, here's another video in the automating uh, your real estate investing business uh, series that I'm doing for the blog. Um, the question is, I hate to call buyers and sellers, uh, but I'm having difficulty finding anyone who can call sellers like I can and convert them into deals. I agree with you, by the way. I hate calling sellers. Uh, I'd prefer just to work in my business instead of having to deal with buyers or sellers at all. Um, if I and by the way, the reason you're asking this question in the first place is because you're good at it to start with, and you can do it. Don't ask this question until you're good at it yourself, because you won't be able to solve the problem. You won't be able to teach somebody else until you do. Um, if I could pull this off, I could completely extract myself from the work and the business and be able to focus on building my business. How can I make this happen? All right, there's a whole long process that we use to, to, to train people to talk to sellers for us. Remember, uh, the first thing, outsource person, you, first of all, you're going to automate before, before you do anything. You're going to automate to get a lot of the tasks done. You're going to eliminate all the junk that you don't need to do. Then you're going to uh, uh, outsource after that. So you're not going to outsource until you've automated and eliminated. Then it's outsourcing. That's when you bring in another person. Because whenever you hire somebody, it gets expensive if you're, if you're not producing. So you want it to be as efficient as possible. So you're outsourcing first your admin. Then you're going to outsource somebody who's talking to your buyers. And then you're going to outsource someone talking to your sellers. So this is the last thing that you're going to outsource in your business because it's the thing that, that demands the highest level of skill. The person who's putting the deals together, the seller, talking to the sellers, that person is the rainmaker in the deal, not the automation guy, not the guy who's talking to the buyers. It's the person who's putting the deals together because the deals are ultimately uh, what make it easier to make money doing the other things, make it possible to automate all those other things. So the question is, how do you do that? And I do it in a two-step process. Um, you know, when you when you get good on the phone, you can usually close a deal just by getting on the phone and getting a lease option memo signed in one conversation. But when you're beginning at this, and for those of you who are just getting started, you might want to use the two-step process where you ask a bunch of questions. Uh, ask the questions on the lead sheet that's inside the auto marketer, like where are you moving? How soon you have to leave? You know, what are you going to do if you don't get this thing sold? How much do you owe on your mortgage? What's your monthly payment. All these questions that we need in order to help us structure a zero down deal of some sort or another using one of the zero down structures in the hierarchy that I teach. So if you can get those questions answered and you can ask and you can have, uh, you know, in the first step, you can have uh, somebody who's got a low level of skill ask questions and say, you know, I'm calling for my boss who's an investor and he wants to make an offer on your property. But before he can make an offer, he needs a little bit of information. And I was wondering if I could get a little bit of information from you about the property. Would you mind answering some questions? And almost always they'll say yes. And then they start as asking these questions. And you try to get somebody who's really nice on the phone, somebody friendly. Uh, and uh, so you go through these questions. And one of the questions that they ask is, would you consider selling your home rent to buy rather than selling it outright? Would you, you know, and if they say yes, uh, then all right then, well then you need to talk to my boss. He's going to make an offer on your property. And what if they tell us that they're willing to do a, a rent to buy like this, uh, then we know that this is a pretty good lead. Uh, and after we've gone through this whole process, and then the the, uh, the telemarketer tells them, oh, I, and and Joe's going to give you a call. And just just so you know, he's a really nice guy. You know, he won't put any pressure on you. Uh, you know, he's going to give you two different offers. He's going to give you a cash offer, and he's going to give you an offer, you know, on a lease option or on terms. Is that okay? You know, is there a good time for him to call you tomorrow uh, when he can get in touch with you? And you have them schedule a time where you're going to call them a specific time. You know, down to the minute and uh, then uh, and say and don't worry he's very nice if you don't want to do it he's not going to put any pressure on you you know he's, he's a good guy have them give you that third party validation so that when you get on the phone they're already going to think that oh at least an employee likes him you know uh, so so at least you have something positive going in your in your direction before you get there and it gives you a little bit of weight because now you're coming in as the guy saying hey I'm going to make you an offer do you want to listen to it now the offer that you're going to make on camera cash is going to be a very low offer. So if you make this low offer, you have to apologize before you do it. I said, well, I've got two offers for you. First of all, would you be willing to do the lease option, the deal that, that they were talking about, that, that uh, Shelley was talking with you about yesterday? And um, they may say, yeah, I might be interested, but I also want to hear your cash offer. I said, okay, I'll, I'll give you the cash offer, but I want to tell you up front that uh, you, know, you might be offended. I don't, I'm not giving you this offer because I want to offend you. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just doing it because there's only two ways that we make money as real estate investors. And uh, one is that we buy a property on terms, like a lease option or other other zero down structures, or two that we buy them, uh, you know, dramatically under market value. So I'm going to I'm going to make this offer to you, but it's going to be very low. So please, please don't be offended. Will you promise and have them promise you that they won't be offended, and then you give them a, an, an offer that's 50% less than what they are asking for. Most of the time, they'll say no to that offer. Every once in a while, they say yes, and when they say yes, bingo, you got you know a really nice cash offer. You can do a, a wholesale deal on it if you don't have any cash, or if you do have the cash, even better, because that means you're going to make a chunk of money uh, on a deal like that. So th those are great deals to do if you get them truly at 50% under market value, current market value in the current condition that they're in. But uh, so so they get them to to say yes. That's when you go in and you make the the, the closing call. You're going to be the closer on those deals at the beginning when you're outsourcing uh, this person. So they're going to go on there. They're going to make the calls. They're going to talk to 20 people, and out of those 20, maybe one, two, three of those people you need to talk to, and they find out who they are. Now. As you're having them call, make sure they're calling through the auto marketer system or for, through some other system that keeps track of how much time they're on the, on the call. The auto marketer is nice because it actually records their call, so you can keep track of what they're saying to people. And you can go in and listen to it, and you can train them and help them get better and say, don't say this, say this, do it this way, don't do it that way. They also can't tell you, I put in you know, 10 hours calling these 10 people, uh, when in fact they only put in three hours talking to those 10 people. What we do is when they come in, we say, we'll pay you 150% of the time that you're on the call. We're going to provide all these leads for you. All I have to go to this, do is go to this page and start dialing. And uh, the, the system will keep track of how long you're on the phone. And uh, we'll look at that number at the end of the week, and we'll pay you 150% of whatever time you were on the phone. And it's OK if they're on the phone longer, because they can establish relationships with people. Don't worry about paying them a little extra to be on the phone longer with these people. It's okay. You know, get them better at it, get them more competent at it, um, but don't worry if they spend a little bit more time on there, and then pay them 150%. And you're going to want to pay this person a little bit more, perhaps, than you would pay uh, an admin person or somebody working with your buyers. Maybe you want to pay this person between $15 and $20 an hour, and maybe give them a bonus if you put a deal together, maybe a couple hundred dollar bonus. Now, if it takes them 10 hours to get a deal together, which they should be able to do that on a reasonable basis once they learn how to do this. Uh, if it takes them 10 hours for them to get you a deal and you pay them $20 an hour, that's $300 that you're going to have to pay them in order to get to that deal. The likelihood that they can call 20 people in 10 hours is very high. The likelihood that they can close one out of every five people that they talk to after they get good at it is also very high. But expect at the beginning for them not to be as good at it and to spend some time with them. Uh, we use a system called freeconferencecalling.com where I can get on the phone with the telemarketer and I can train them and spend time training that person, explaining how, what they're supposed to say and how they do it. And you can record the call so that next time when you hire somebody else uh, to take their place because they won't stick around forever. Uh, when you hire somebody else to take their place, you'll be able to have them listen to that call, have them get started, and the, you know get the ball rolling without having to go through this training every single time. So. Uh, again, it's, it's a bigger process than this, and it does take a lot of your time and a lot of effort to train somebody to do this, and there's going to be a lot of turnover. It's going to be a much higher turnover if you pay them $7 an hour than if you paid them $15 or $20 an hour, because it's a lot harder for somebody to go get a $15 or $20 an hour job than it is to get a $7 an hour job. I also suggest that you get somebody who's, who has English as their first language, assuming that you're speaking to an English audience. Uh, you know, if you're doing this outside the country, obviously you want to get somebody who's uh, who's working in the same language that the people that they're talking with. Anyway, uh, that's kind of a brief nutshell overview of how to outsource uh, finding sellers. All right, hope that helps.